So this is uh, Draw My Life. Um, everybody seems to be doing this on YouTube, so I figured I'd give it a try, and uh, some of you have been with me through it all, but uh, this is my Draw My Life, and uh, yeah, lots of stick figures, that's all I gotta say. So I was born in California, uh, Southern California, in the middle of the desert, uh, to a mom and dad. I was first born, and I had a little brother and a little sister. And when I was little, I used to chase girls on the playground. And really, I mean, the hope was that they would chase me, and sometimes they did. I liked that. Uh, when I was in kindergarten, I asked a girl to marry me. <laughs> and she said, no, I don't think we're old enough. And I was sad. Uh, also, when I was little, I shared a room with my brother, and I tried to keep it all clean and nice looking. And I was happy when it was, and then he'd come in and he'd just uh, you know, be the little devil that he was, and like practically just look at everything, and it would just be all messy. And that used to drive me nuts, and I'd be all sad and be like, Mom! So when I was eight, we moved to Washington, and that was in 1989, and we went to a new school. And at that new school, uh, fourth grade or so, fifth grade, I had a friend named Amy, and she said, I wish I was a boy. And that's when I was first like, well, I wish I was a girl. And you know, nothing was really said about that, so um, never brought it up again. Uh, also, growing up, I was, I just loved Little Mermaid when it came out. We saw it in the theater and all that, and my sister had an Ariel doll. I used to sleep with her, and I was in love with her and all this stuff. It was kind of funny. I got made fun of for it. Oh yeah, when I was little, I was deathly afraid of my parents being raptured without me. It's like somehow I knew that I wasn't fitting in to their Christian worldview. And mom was always telling me to cut my hair. Like it would get a little bit long, and I'd be like, "Oh, but I want it to be long." And she would always be like, "No, you look like a girl." And cut it. And so, I mean, throughout my life and growing up, I was, you know, always trying to date girls and be like, date me, and they'd just be like, no, just constant rejection. Yeah, um, it was really bad. It was really hurtful and really sad. And so, because of that, I wrote poetry. Um, it was because of one girl that I got into writing poetry. It was mostly sad poetry, and then, you know, I, when I wrote love poetry and stuff, I was happy to. It's good to get it all out. We grew up in a church, uh, United Church of Christ, and when I was in seventh grade or so, my parents decided to leave them because they were open to gay people. And so we found a Lutheran church, and as a family, we were happy and all excited that they didn't like gays, I guess. <laughs> and so in that church, I joined the youth choir, and very early on, I, I realized I could sing a lower bass. And sometimes the youth choir director liked that. A lot of times he'd be like, no, you gotta sing higher. And I'd be like, yeah, he'd be like, sing baritone. And I'd be like, but I'm a man, I sing bass. Like, I really overcompensated. And also, yeah, growing up, puberty. I was excited about puberty and, you know, hoping for these big changes to happen. I guess I wasn't really happy with what was what had happened so far. And, and yeah, I was hoping for something to happen. I don't know exactly what, but I did like have horrible nightmares about growing breasts and that everybody around me would see that and just laugh at me. Um, it's kind of interesting to think of now. Um, but yeah, that was my nightmare back then. Ironic as it is right now. And then I went to high school and really found my place in the nerds, I guess. Like, I did not fit in at all. I wore glasses. And, uh, yeah, I got into the computers. Um, and I got into the computer club and became the president. So, really, yeah, kind of solidified my nerd status, you could say. And I also, like, yeah, I didn't fit in with the girls, obviously. Um, I had friends that were girls. We exchanged notes and stuff. But there was always this defining line where the girls got to be with the girls and I just was never a part of that and I always felt left out with that. Um, 
And in that way, the girls had the Cosmo and Glam, Glamour magazines, and the guys would always read them and be like, oh, she's hot, and I'd do her, and I'd be like, no, I don't, I don't want to look at them. Even the girls would say, oh, look at them, and I'm like, no. And then I realized early on, if I didn't, uh, they would think I was gay, so I joined in. And then uh, junior year, I got contacts, and so that didn't seem to help my nerd status, but it made me happy, and made me feel a little bit better about how I looked. But there was the JCPenney catalog, and I, I remember like seeing the women's underwear ads and be like, oh, that's cool, and then seeing the men's underwear ads and just like, no, turn the page, can't look at that, nope. Like, there's nothing, I wasn't even allowed to look at men in any way like that. But, you know, I continued my work on the computer, taught myself uh, development languages, and even put my poetry on a website. And, you know, also growing up, I was very, uh, they called me the preacher sometimes, and I'd preach against being gay and stuff to my friends, and they'd be like, whatever. And so because I wanted to go to a private college, but I couldn't afford it, it was too expensive, and so I ended up going to a public college, and that worked out. But while I was in college, it was, you know, it was just kind of this class, work, and play, and, and it all involved computers, and I wasn't social really much at all. I didn't want to leave the apartment much going. But then I met a girl and we actually dated and got engaged and got married within about three years. And uh, moved in together after that and eventually got a house after our apartment and uh, we were pretty happy together. And uh, throughout that time I got, yeah, I was involved with the church and men's groups and they were all like, be a man. And I was like, what? I just was never comfortable with that. And uh, my, my wife really wanted sex a lot, and I really would rather be on the computer. I just wasn't really that interested. I mean, we, we had sex, but it just wasn't that something I was really into. But my career kept going on. Uh, systems engineer, Linux expert, developer, and I, I enjoyed where that was going with my work. And then one day I came across a comic where a guy was transformed into a girl, and it just really confused me. I was like, what is going on? Why am I feeling like this? Yeah, in my head here, I'm thinking, me dressed up as a girl, like, what, what's going on here? Why, what's, why, you know, it just really made an impact on me. So one day, I asked my wife uh, how, it would, how she felt about uh, dressing me up and us hanging around the house as girls. And she wasn't sure at first, and she was, but she was like, okay. And so, dressed me up in a dress, did my makeup, curled my hair a little bit. And uh, I looked in the mirror for the first time, and I was like, whoa, like, for the first time, I actually liked what I saw in the mirror. Um, it, like, it looked right. I just had this peaceful feeling. It was really odd. And she wasn't very happy. Um, you know, she wanted a man, and as the days went by and I was still cross-dressing at home, she got, you know, more upset and more upset, and it really kind of hurt. And I was like, but this is who I am. I was like, you know, this is this new part of me. And so I went to church therapy, and I went, you know, I, I told the men's Bible study I was with, and they kind of encouraged me to stop doing it, and, and I, I did stop, and I were tried to work through it, but I was really sad, and I got into a depression kind of mode where all I did was work and sleep, and it really was no way to live a life. At some point, I started, you know, looking for ways to kill myself on the internet, and my ex, my wife saw that, and she was upset and so, so we ended up uh, talking to my parents and I told, came out to my parents said mom and dad I'm a girl and my mom was really upset but both of them seemed fairly supportive at the time um, but then the men's bible study just kind of went at me and uh, told me why every, every reason why it was wrong threw bible verses at me told me to stop it told me I was destroying my wife it told me how gross it was and I was just I just felt horrible I, I was went from almost suicidal to straight to suicidal <clears throat> and so I did the whole truck in the garage thing. I started my truck up in the middle of the morning and hoping to die. And my, ex, or my wife woke up and opened the garage and, and I stopped it. And so I went off to the psych ward. <clears throat> I committed myself because I knew like there was no nothing to fix this. But I came out to people in the psych ward. You know, they were all there for other things. And I was like, um, I'm a girl. And they were like, they didn't seem to care, like it wasn't a big deal for them, and I was like, oh wow, maybe this is acceptance. And so, when I left the psych ward, I knew that some change had to happen to continue with my life. And so I started off uh, seeing a different therapist, one that wasn't involved with the church, and uh, that kind of helped 
kind of work through some of my issues. And and meanwhile, my parents went to a church therapist that uh, didn't really help any of us any, I don't think. They basically told them to, you know, let me go and pretend like I was dead. And so they basically said I wasn't allowed at the house anymore. And, and I really haven't talked to them much since. It's been really hard. But uh, so then my ex, or my wife and I separated, and she went off to live with her parents, and I started hormone therapy, hormone replacement therapy, and as some of you may remember, I took my first hormone pills on YouTube, and that was my first, one of my first YouTube videos here. And so transition commenced, um, I did the name change, um, you know, big court order, changing all the documents, I came out at work, work was really supportive. Um, and so I actually got to go full time as a woman at work, and that was really a huge milestone for me. And worked on my voice. Some of my older videos, some of you probably remember my old voice, and you might see that in some of the other ones that I have. Um, and then I went to support group, and you know, it, was, it helped to have other people there who understood what I was going through as well. And for once in my life, I allowed myself to look at guys, and I was like, wow, I mean, muscles, and I actually kind of <laughs> started to understand some attraction there, and I kind of allowed myself at that point. Um, so I moved out of our house into my own apartment and started my, my life off again, and for once in my life, I fit in with the girls, like before where I was cut off because I was a boy, now I actually fit in, and I didn't have to try, like all the stuff I always overworked to try. Um, but my com in the meantime, my computer was lonely because I was um, being a socialite. And so then uh, my wife and I got divorced officially. And she met another guy and got married and had a kid, which is kind of what she wanted. So I think, I think she's happy now. And then I met another lady who went through a transition much later in life. And she kind of became my adopted mom. Um, she transitioned, yeah, like I said, later in life and kind of was cut off from her ex-wife and her kids a little bit. And so we kind of had something in common there. And then the big surgery came, and I didn't depict it very well here, but just underwear difference here, <laughs> trying to make it PC. Um, it was a really tough recovery for me, uh, a few months, really, and work worked around me a bit. I got to work from home and stuff, and um, yeah, time went by, and it was just, uh, it was really tough, but I made it through. And yeah, made it. I <laughs> was able to wear a swimsuit finally and things like that. Um, feel confident about that and be really happy about uh, that. To, to feel really complete as a woman. And oh, and then my brother. Yeah, my brother kind of left my parents too, and so he kind of became close to me. And, and so throughout my whole kind of, it's kind of interesting to watch my transition where I was anti-gay and very Bible-centric and, and I came out and I, I realized that not that everybody's different, like you don't really know what uh, someone else, how someone else can feel unless you're in their shoes. And then one day I, you know, I dated a lot, but one day I met this guy named Tom and he fell in love with me, he says right away, and I was kind of like, hmm, I, I don't know, and we were friends. and. Eventually, we started getting rom romantic, and I fell in love with him, too. And he actually encouraged me to do my first modeling shoot, and he kind of set it all up. It was a pin-up lingerie, a little bit risque, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, it, it really, uh, I took those pictures, and I started uh, networking, and I did a bunch of modeling on my own, and uh, eventually with shows and runway. and. I, I still enjoy that. It's kind of a really a fun hobby that I can do on my own. And in the meantime, Tom and I got closer, and we, uh, yeah, he kind of encouraged me to work on my iPhone apps on my own time. You know, I was doing that for work as well. But we also went to the ballet together. Um, we still do that. Um, we have nachos. It's one of our things. <laughs> and uh, yeah, recently we've gotten back into skiing and snowboarding, and that's been a lot of fun. And really, yeah, I'm a happy girl. He brings me flowers, and we just work really well together. I'm really happy. 
So what's the future bring? Well, I hope the future brings, you know, my parents back into my life at some point and they can meet Tom and that that'll work out at some point, but who knows? Um, as far as YouTube videos, I mean, I hope that I can continue with them. I, I, I don't, I worry about that because, you know, people could find out and see my face and, and find out I'm trans, but, but really, I just want to thank all of you for watching because you have made my life better and I, yeah, thank you so much.